Hey guys, Joe Hubbard here. Now I'm really stoked to share this with you today. Earlier this morning, I went and picked up my brand new Warwick JHB Signature Bass. I'm really excited to see this. I haven't taken it out of the box yet, so what I thought I'd do is a, a, an unboxing video with kind of going through the specs of the instrument and then doing some sound samples. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. So just to bear in mind, I don't have a staff of people to hold cameras for me and do all sorts of cool things. So I'm going to try to get this in the view of the camera, but it's just a little on me doing this, okay? So anyway, let me just grab my trusty knife here and then get this box in on the picture. And then I'm going to go ahead and then open that there. And... Here, get that back out of the way. Opening this up. Okay, it's all packed nice and tight. Throw this out here. Oh, it's got this kind of cheesecloth cover. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, this sort of deal that's covering the gig bag. It's sort of shipped in the gig bag. So let's pull this out the box over here and you can see how this comes packed now this gig bag is super cool that comes with these Warwick custom shop bases you got a choice of a hard shell case or this beautiful leather gig bag and they've kind of modeled it on the old reunion blues bag in as much as They've taken everything that was good about the original bag. I'm not talking about what Reunion Blues does now. I'm talking about the original. This is years ago. I ended up buying one of these back in 1981. An original leather Reunion Blues gig bag on Denmark Street in London. Probably then cost me about 130 pounds. So uh, now they're probably doubled. They're like 300 of those Harvest uh, leather ones. Definitely about three, 350, something like that. And what the original uh, Reunion Blues gig bag had on it, which most of the ones now don't, is this handle here, man. This is the best thing because when you're traveling on the tube or you're just having to get through a door or you, you know, your back is, you know, it's, it's kind of been too hard on your back. That is the handle that you need, not on the back. There's a lot of the ones that have it on the back now, but it's on the front. And again, Warwick being Warwick and with the attention to detail, they're the only company that I know that has got that. Some have now built it in, like I know the Harvest bag has this little pocket that you can grab on the front, but I don't like that, man. Again, this is like the wheel. You know, you can't reinvent that. So. This is a beautiful gig bag, super sturdy, and what they've taken from the new sort of designs is that you can fasten the, you know, it's got a sort of post where you put the neck on. Let me just open it up and get this out, man. I can't wait to see this. <clears throat> and let snap this. All this is like really kind of super hard and tough now, uh, but it'll get worn in. And, <laughs> wow, this looks cool, man. I guess you guys can't really see this. But, you know, true to the whole uh, Warwick thing, I don't know if I can pick this up and put this here, but true to this Warwick thing, look at this, like, you know, they've got this, uh, you know, nice velvet cloth that's covering the base. So that's, you know, just a little touch. And then here, it's got... I don't know if you can see this, but it has this where you strap the, uh, the base down. It's got a little post here, and it's super padded everywhere. Just very thoughtful design. So just blown away that I got this. Whoa. You know, and just for a, a short, hot minute, when I opened that up, I thought, man, they screwed it up. They gave me an ebony fretboard. Look at that. But that's not... What that is, it's just a piece of cardboard that protects it, I guess. And they sort of put that on the top. 
So you can basically see what I've got here. This is just gorgeous, man. The whole idea, you see the, the back of it. It's got this beautiful honey violin finish, which is really, um, you know, it looks like it's just part of the wood. It doesn't even look like a finish. It doesn't even look like a satin finish. You know, there's some bases that have a satin finish, but there's, you can tell it's a kind of a fake finish, you know. And this is just so, like, amazing. This swamp ash body with this triple-A flame maple top. And then you might notice this here, the bass mute that is made by a good friend of mine in Holland called Elio Martina. And uh, these are brilliant. I first noticed this when uh, watching James Genus play, uh, who's played with lots of guys from Steely Dan to the Brecker Brothers to Herbie Hancock, you know, he's played with everyone. And he had one of these, and, and I, I did my research and found out that this guy, Ilo Martina, makes these in Holland, in Amsterdam. And I met him one year, and he's been very supportive to me. And, uh, you know, so I'm using this kind of on, you know, on, on my instruments, uh, certainly on my five-string uh, basses. Uh, you may have noticed that on the Federa I used before I got this, uh, I had one on there. Again, this is the Omega bass bridge uh, made by All Parts, which is a, an exact copy of the old Leo Kwan Badass 2. Uh, I've got two Aguilar uh, super double pickups there, which are amazing pickups. Um, it's got a maple fretboard, which is a bird's eye maple fretboard. I don't know if you can really see the detail of that inlay, though. That's my continuous learning logo there. And um, again, it's got this, uh, you know, zero, uh, um, this sort of, I, I don't, if it's called, my, I keep calling it a zero fret technology, and that's probably the wrong terminology. But basically what it is, is that there's no fret wire that overhangs, so it will never sort of uh, need filing down. You know, it's kind of built into the base. It's a very cool... Um, you know, a, a technology specific to Warwick. And it's got this very small mandolin fret wire here, which are made out of nickel. Uh, it's got a graphite nut, <clears throat> you can see here, with the headstock where it has my JHB logo there, along with the cool Warwick W that you're all familiar with. And, uh, and then it's got a flame maple uh, neck, uh, which is just amazing. And, you know, all these kind of carve-outs here, the scoops here, scoops here, really makes this bass special. And one of the things about this instrument that is just so cool is the weight. Because it's easily uh, one-third lighter than my Federa that I had. And although, you know, I did really like that Federa bass, but one of the things that I wanted was a little bit lighter weight to have around my neck. So that's what we kind of achieved with this because this is really just amazing. Beautiful wide spacing, 19 mil spacing. I really like the way this feels. It feels natural to me. And uh, just a beautiful, thin, asymmetrical uh, uh, carved neck. Uh, so it just feels really good to play. It doesn't feel too bulky. It's not like a, playing a cricket bat, you know, it's just, it's very smooth, plays like a dream. And then the circuit, uh, I think when I did one of those videos uh, that was on, I kind of described the circuit a little bit incorrect to the way that we've laid it out in the end. So what I've got here is a, a stacked uh, volume on the top, passive tone here. Uh, this is a pickup pan. This is the high mid here, uh, which is at about, it's round about uh, 2K, maybe a little less, like 1.8. Um, and then this is the low mid, which is uh, round about 400 hertz. And um, there's a cut and boost on both of those. And then I've got the treble and I've got the, the bass. And the treble set at about 10K and the uh, bass is at around 40 hertz. So it's, um, you know, really uh, uh, 
fitted with all the right ingredients for this thing to sound really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check that it's in tune. I'm going to, uh, you know, just kind of uh, play around on it for uh, 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to run you through some sound samples. <laughs> sound clips today and you're going to be getting many more because this is going to be my main instrument from now on. I also have a four string bass being made by Warwick right now which is a little bit different and I'm going to unveil that in another video in a couple of weeks time when I get a hold of it. Let me know in the comments section below if you'd like me to do a separate lesson on that cool odd time groove that I demoed today. Another thing I wanted to comment on are the strings that I'm using. These are made by Warwick and they're called EMP, which stands for Enhanced Molecular Protection. These strings are coated stainless steel strings that give you the sound of stainless steel, but with the feel of nickel wound strings. They're supposed to last a little bit longer, so I'll give you an update further down the road as I've only had this bass for a few days. If you're interested in becoming a better improvising bass player and learning great musical content from arpeggios to grooves, then subscribe to my channel now. If you like this video today, then be sure to support my channel by giving it a big thumbs up. And if you really like this video, then please check out my books, my membership website, and my Skype lessons. Until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.